Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and to wrap up this week, I have a photography show and tell to share with you that I think may turn into a little bit of a small build. Uh, it's always fun to end the week with a little bit of laser cutting because I want to get to making stuff. So uh, if you know me, I do a bunch of photography at home, primarily with this camera right here. That's my Canon 5D Mark IV full frame camera, wonderful for shooting video as well as taking photos of figurines, products, things I'm covering for tested. Uh, but if I'm photographing or shooting video of my kid, for example, or uh, my puppy, well, she's four years old now, uh, running around the house, running around the backyard, I'm not always gonna have my DSLR with me. And so my main camera for every day today is gonna be my phone as probably for you as well. It's the camera that we have in our pockets uh, most of the time. And having used the iPhone 11 Pro for almost a year now, I guess, uh, you know, it has three lenses, a bunch of different shooting modes, or a ton of apps you can download for photography and video. I find myself really using it in two ways uh, most of the time. First, for photos, the vast majority of my photos are with the wide angle lens. So of the three lenses, you have ultra wide angle, wide angle, and then also telephoto, 13 millimeter equivalent, 26 millimeter equivalent, 50 millimeter equivalent for full frames if you're keeping track. And I use that standard wide angle lens in portrait mode. I find that the sensor is the best, gives me the best image quality in the wide angle lens. And the portrait mode has gotten so much better uh, since they first introduced that feature. And so most of the photos I'm taking of my son, of the dog are with that portrait mode on the 26 millimeter equivalent. On the video side though, the thing I'm really liking and really have been using is the ultra wide angle lens. That's the 13 millimeter one. And while for photos, it gives you this really almost distorted fisheye view of the world, for video, it crops that in just a little bit. And while there's no image stabilization or even the ability to change focus with this lens on the iPhone, uh, it's wide enough that it looks really steady. Uh, the videos I've been capturing and sharing with my family and friends, everyone assumes I'm using some type of handheld gimbal or even filming with a drone, but no, I'm just holding the camera a little bit low and tracking the kid as he's running through a uh, playground or running through the yard and it looks really steady. And the fact that it's a fixed focal length or fixed uh, focal point doesn't really matter because of the distances I'm filming at. And for video at 4K, 24 FPS, I've been really happy with that. Now in the world of smartphone photography and iPhone photography, of course, there are a bunch of companies that do aftermarket lenses. You can buy lens attachments that give you all sorts of different looks and stylized looks um, for your phone video or photos. And one of them for a uh, moment, a very popular one, um, but another one is Sandmark. And they recently sent me a range of their uh, iPhone lenses. And I've been using a bunch of them, so I wanna go over a few of them with you today. We're gonna start with the, the wide angle, the ultra, ultra wide angle, their fish eye lens, and that's this guy right here. It's a 10 millimeter equivalent, so even wider than the ultra wide angle on the phone. And here it's a really, really stylized look. I do like that the lens element, the lens stacking they have here, gives you a pretty clean image from edge to edge. And this does mount on top of the 26 millimeter standard. All of these actually mount on top of the 26 millimeter iPhone lens that has the best sensor. It's gonna get the best light. It's gonna have the best uh, image stabilization. Uh, and when you put the fisheye 10 millimeter on top of that, you can shoot some pretty cool video and pretty cool photos, but really a, a niche case, not something that I'm gonna use for or default to for my standard photos. Uh, it's gonna look, if I want it really close to something or uh, the examples you see here, again, that's where I would use this. Moving up, there is a wide angle lens that they sell. This is a 16 mil, so it turns your 26 mil into 16 mil. And you know, I found this almost a little bit redundant in terms of what's already on offer in the iPhone. The iPhone has a 13 mil, which I love for video, has a 26 mil that I love for photos. And so the 16 mil here, you know, while it is wider than what you get out of the box on the iPhone, it's the image quality isn't that different enough and the video 
isn't wide enough, uh, isn't unique enough that I'm finding myself putting this one on uh, a lot. You know, it is kind of a little bit extraneous. Uh, the same, I think, could also be said for their telephoto lens. They have a 60 mil one. Now, it does look better than the 50 mil on the iPhone. And with that longer focal length, you do get a little more flattering images for portraits for people. Um, but it isn't all that much different, at least different enough from the 50 mil that you get on the 11 Pro um, that it, I think is worth the investment. Uh, something that is unique though in their lineup is a macro lens. And this one I had a lot of fun with, uh, especially getting really up close. Of course, you're gonna do your standard looking at the tips of your fingers or coins. But for me, it's about finding detail on the painted figures that I have, the six scale figures. And getting right up close to their faces and getting all the details so their sculpts and the paint jobs and this macro lens, I mean, you kind of have to get super close because uh, you're limited in terms of how much you can actually focus on with it. It is a niche case, but it is something that you absolutely cannot get with your phone unless you buy a third party lens attachment. What ended up being my favorite lens to use though from the Sandmark lineup it was their anamorphic lens. Uh, this is primarily uh, designed for video and you know, like a cinema camera's anamorphic lens, it does exactly that. It makes a super wide image, a distorted image actually, because it's using the same uh, 4K sensor for video as you would get out of the box here. And you have to de-squeeze the video, so you can use an app like Filmic Pro or you can do it in Adobe Premiere Pro, super easy to do that. Uh, and if you don't de-squeeze the video, um, you, and you, you do see it stretch and you see exactly what that effect is. So it's kind of, it's getting you extra, that horizontal field of view, but vertically um, it's, it's not giving you uh, extra field of view. You have to compress that image. They're not square pixels, essentially. Um, and the kind of cinematic looks you get with an anamorphic lens when calibrated properly, uh, they, they look cinematic. They look like a professional video production. It's just very luxurious in terms of the space and the frame which you can have a subject move and the type of action you can get, even for static subjects and, and things like landscapes. You get really, really cool visuals with an anamorphic uh, lens. So that's the range of the, the five lenses they offer. And in terms of the way they mount onto the phone, you, you see I have them all on their cases here, um, but they're not locked into the cases, so the lenses do come off. But the way they screw on to the case, because you have to use either a case or their clip, that I found a little bit clunky. The threads were always perfectly aligned, and so uh, for me it was a little bit of a kind of an extra step to take it out of the box, remove the lens caps, put the case on. I usually don't like traveling with a case. Um, and that extra step really prohibited me from using these as often as I would like to. And so, and each of these do come with a case and I didn't want to throw them away. So my solution is to keep them on the cases, right? I'm gonna keep these on the cases and so I can swap the cases as opposed to the lenses. Um, but then the problem becomes, how do I store them? Uh, it's not gonna be like in a bag. It's they don't stack easily to fit in my camera bag. And the last thing I want are for these to sit in a drawer or in a cubby in my office here. I want them to be easily accessible for when I want to use the lenses for those unique shots. And so currently I have them honestly just stored in a cardboard box. You know, I'm sorry to say that's what I that's the solution I have. And so I want to have a better solution and design something. And I think I have an idea because while I can't stack these like side by side like this, I can stack them like this to save a little bit of space. And I do think I can design a type of tray to kind of store all of these lenses in a way and label them uh, to make them easily accessible uh, as well as have them nicely stored and kept safe. Uh, so we're gonna head over to Illustrator. I have a design that I've sketched up and then we'll head over to the laser cutter and see what we can whip up.
All right, I got way too excited with this build. I may have gotten ahead of myself with the assembly without showing you guys, but here we are. This is what I've fashioned as a storage tray for these lenses. Uh, what you saw design was basically this interior. That's why I had in my head, I knew I couldn't stack the lens cases um, kind of back to back, but I could stack them interlock. So I couldn't really, I didn't want to store them like this, but I did want to store them like so. And so I did some measurements with my calipers, figured out what the kind of thicknesses I would need for the accommodate these cases here. Uh, and I didn't need it in full height because I could have them basically stored to basically half the, the height of uh, the case itself. Uh, and let's do a test. Um, I did encase the acrylic uh, tray in uh, a wood frame here just for aesthetic purposes and for ease of uh, traveling and moving around. But if we put them, let's see, we'll go try it this way. Yeah, here we go. And like so, oh, this is looking pretty good. Give myself a little bit of buffer room on all the sides. There we go, and this goes like so, and like so. That is not bad at all, and I left some space for, you know, their extra cases that they include. I don't want to throw away these accessories, and so I have places to store them, even like right here, a uh, cleaning cloth, of course, throw that in there. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. This is my solution for storing this third party lens and case accessory. It's almost a little bit like, um, like a tray for watches. Uh, I think that's what inspired me to, to make this. And I'm really, really happy with how this fits together, much more presentable uh, than uh, the cardboard box that I had them in, and I may even design a lid to fit on top of this, something maybe clear or, or frosted acrylic, just to add some extra protection. Um, definitely want to label these, Maybe that's what I'll do next, but it's very simple then for me to grab one of these and then pop them on my phone and take a photo or a video. That is super cool. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit more dressing to this case, uh, build a lid, and um, you know, wrap up the project. All right, time to wrap this up. And here it is, my complete iPhone 11 lens set in a custom made tray. I made a little bit of a acrylic hood on top just to protect it from some dust. Uh, but if we pop this off, then we'll see that here it is, all the lenses plus accessories, nothing thrown away. Uh, put some gaff tape on the side use a whiteout pen to label them. So I know I got from my 10 millimeter all the way to 60, the macro, and my favorite, the anamorphic, and then the label here. Uh, and this was a really fun project. Really pleased with how this came out and having your gear, your tools, uh, nicely organized and displayed even, uh, for me at least, encouraged me to use them more. They're not gonna be just be stuffed in a drawer or thrown in a bag. Uh, I'm really pleased with how this came out and I look forward to incorporating these lenses in some of the future videos that we shoot. I hope you enjoyed this project and this show and tell. If you use uh, third-party lenses for your smartphone, let me know what your preferences are and what your experiences have been. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, well, happy weekend. We'll be back with more builds, more projects in the coming weeks. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.